Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing a guide, a tips and tricks guide, on the new Splattershot Nova. It's, you know, I'm a little bit late to the guide, but it's a relatively new weapon, one of the newest. Uh, and I really wanted to do a guide on it because I saw some mixed reviews about it. People not sure where its place is in the game or how to play it or what to run with it. Um, and a lot of people talking about its inconsistencies and its cons more than its pros. So just like the Tri-Stringer, I want to try to give this weapon some love and provide some tips for you guys so you have a better time using it in solo queue. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so the Splattershot Nova, let's get into the basics first of all. Uh, usually when I'm talking about the basics, I like to cover range, just so you guys have an idea of how far you can use this weapon and how far it'll be effective. Um, and actually, this weapon's range is one of its strongest points, and I'll get into that later. But for now, let's cover it. So we're standing at this line right here. If I shoot all the way out, right, I shoot straight, even if I shoot all the way up, you know, but if I shoot straight to give it the far reach, you can see that we have one, two, three, four lines out, right? So what I'll do is I will uh, clean up really quickly. We can change our gear first. I'll change. And to compare it, just to give you guys some comparison and range, you'll be able to see that uh, when I clean up here and use the pro, it's about the same, right? You can see it's about the same distance, that four lines, one, two, three, four. And then if we switch even more, so pro's a little bit farther than that, but still just barely farther than that. If we change our gear again, and we change it to the dually squelchers, and we clean up again so you guys can see it clearly, it's also about the same, a little bit longer with that splash distance. Um, and so the exact numbers for the range of these weapons is, uh, find you, you can find it on the splatoon wiki um but yeah basically the idea you want to know is that for the most part they're they're close in range they have about the same effective range um so any fights that you would be taking with dually squelchers or pro you can also take with this weapon but that's with a grain of salt you can take those fights in the same range but not in the same way right so before we get into playstyle, the basics of the weapon, we've covered the range, you can see it has around the same as Dually Squelchers in Pro, right? This weapon is also a five shot kill, right? So a long time to kill, uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'll do that slower for you guys so you can see it. See here, we'll go back here. One, two, three, four, five, right? Five shot kill with the weapon and it does 24 damage per pellet. So there's some good things and some bad things with this, right? The trade-off here with that five-shot kill is that it has an extremely fast fire of rate or rate of fire, and that's what I want to talk about, right? This weapon, in my opinion, when I've played with it, has the best fire rate for the range it has. When you're using a pro, the fire rate is much slower. It's more like this, right? Just like that. That's kind of what the pro is like. And with dually squelchers, you can get this fast fire rate, but you have to be in a roll animation to do that, right? Which kind of locks you now. It is, you know, it is pretty, uh, pretty good mobility when you're in the dodge roll, but it still locks you into an animation and it doesn't give you full mobility. With this weapon, you can shoot, get that full range, that full fire rate and move however you want. You can substrafe, right? You can squid roll and get that range, all of that stuff. Um, so that's what I want to talk about with this weapon. I think it's an extremely niche weapon and I think it's the only weapon that does what it does. And that's really what I found to like about it so much. Um, no other weapon to me can cover that range and have that same fire rate, and it really catches people off guard. I'll end up doing another video where I actually play the weapon in solo queue, but uh, I found that when I'm playing in solo queue, this weapon is able to catch a lot of people off guard through its range, um, through its mobility, uh, where you're able to get that fire rate without having to be locked in an animation or have a low fire rate, you know, and then just have to feel a little bit more sluggish like you would with the pro. You just get full range, right? Full range, full rate of fire, and you're chilling. So that's really, I think, the strong suit of the weapon. So now that we've covered the basics, um, I wanna go into the playstyle a little bit more, um, but let me actually, let me cover the subs first. So with the sub and the special, your sub is gonna be the point sensor, right? You just throw it and it's gonna take a bit of your ink, not too much. Uh, but it's going to take a bit of your ink, and it's going to point out any enemies that are in the radius when it's thrown, and it'll stick around for a bit. So, you know, we can use these guys as an example. It'll stick around for a bit, so if any enemies move into the radius, as you can see, they'll also get tagged. Um, so that's a sub that I really like. It's very good with this weapon 
uh, because you're going to be able to have the range to follow up on it. So you can see them and then be like, oh, okay, they're over here. I'll just shoot over, right? Let's say they're like over, you know, a ramp or something and you tag them by throwing it over a ramp or over a wall. Then you can start shooting at them and just shoot at the sensor and you'll already know, right? Uh, you'll know that they're there and you can try to hit them. So that's great. And it's also good for information for your team, especially in solo queue when coordination is going to be weaker than if you were playing, you know, on voice comms. Um, and finally, the special is going to be the killer whales. Obviously, you can split these up. You get three batches of two, um, six in total. So you're going to be able to split them up how you want. Um, but yeah, that is the kit for the weapon. So now that we've fully covered the basics, I didn't want to move on too fast. But now that we fully covered the basics, let's move on to the playstyle. Okay, guys, so when talking about playstyle for this weapon, um, it's a weird one. It's going to take a lot of getting used to, similar to the Tri Stringer. It's a new type of weapon, but this is what I've found to work so far. Uh, and it could still use some more testing, but this is what I think. Playing this weapon at a range, just barely outside of effective range for, you know, regardless of the weapon you're playing, is perfect, right? You want to adapt that range to what the weapon you're facing is. But this weapon can catch a lot of people off guard. So if you're fighting, for example, a splatter shot, you know, I guess the Tenetech splatter shot, let's say, right? Or just a normal one. Or you're facing a splatter shot junior. They're going to try to get up close and personal. But all you want to do is maintain your maximum range. You do not want to get up close and personal with them. This is the difference between the Dually Squelchers and this. In Dually Squelchers, I think you could go, you know, using the Dually Squelchers, you could go like full up, like right up into somebody's face, dodge roll around them and hit them. You could duel with close range slayers because you have the mobility to switch up your style. But uh, just like with Pro, you wouldn't do that because, you know, while the Pro is a, you know, three hit kill instead of a five hit kill, um, it still takes a while to get those shots off. The fire rate isn't that fast. So you would probably die to a close range uh, slayer like the Splash or the Splatter Shot before you would be able to kill them. Same thing with this weapon, right? You want to play just outside of any close range weapon effective play. So you don't want to be playing here if this is a Tenetech. You want to be playing here. And I could be playing even further. I could even be playing out here, right? And just barely get the hits. That's kind of the range as we know we got, we've got a few lines. That's kind of the extent of the range, right? That you want to be in, especially for you to be, you know, maintaining your accuracy. But you just play barely outside of their effective range. Um, when it comes to snipers, right? Let's say there's, you know, this is a sniper up here. I find that playing more up close and personal is good with this weapon. Some weapons, again, you might want to just stay outside and let your other back lines or mid lines deal with them because you not, might not be able to contest with a charger, right? With a pro, really good pro players are able to contest with back lines, um, but it does take a while. And in that time, a charger might just shoot you, right? But if you play up close with this weapon, you're going to be able to get those shots. Now, it's important, especially against backlines and midlines, that you try to play a little bit closer. And the reason why I say that is because most midlines, in fact, I think all midlines and all uh, backlines are going to be able to kill you faster than you can kill them if you play in their range or outside of it. Reason why is because you have a longer time to kill value, right? You have five shot kill with this weapon, and that's going to take a while. The other thing is that with a five shot kill, it gives your opponents more room to escape or get away, or you might just miss, right? Which can make it more than a five shot kill. You might, you know, hit three shots and then miss some of them and then have to re-aim or whatever it is. Playing closer closes the gap for you, right? So when I'm playing against other pros or other dually squelchers, which are the weapons I compared with this one, I play more close up to them, slightly closer, not like in their face or anything, but instead of playing back here like I would against a, you know, like I said, a splatter shot or a splash, maybe I'll play like here, right? Or I'll play like halfway in between these two lines. I'll play like here, right? Because while they can't hit me, it gives me a lot more consistency and uh, a lot more forgiveness to hit my shots and kill them first. Especially if you have them tagged with a point sensor, you're going to be able to track them and know where they're going, and they're going to just have to follow you blindly, right? Try to find where you are, shoot you. So it does give you a little bit of an advantage to follow closer, but... I'm definitely open to hearing uh, other play styles you guys have in mind for this weapon in the comments down below, so let me know what you guys think. Now, when it comes to the special and the sub-utility, I already covered point sensors, how you want to be using these to give your team information and follow up other people. Um, and it's really good for that, really, really good for that. Like, I cannot understate that. I want to say it again because it's very important. Uh, being able to use these point sensors to find other people and then use your fall-off damage to get them over a wall or over an obstacle, or just follow them, make your tracking easier so you can just track where they're going instead of having to just shoot them on your own. You can predict their movement if you see where they're going already. So point sensors are really good. 
Uh, another good thing that I really like with this weapon is the movement. Obviously, substrafing is a present with a lot of weapons, um, but you can substrafe with point sensor, and it always feels pretty clean to me. You can, you know, substrafe into a squid roll. I messed it up there, but you can do that, right? And then you can start shooting. And you don't want to throw your bomb like that. I'm still a little bit rusty, but, you know, you do that, and then you start shooting and, you know, hit your opponents in... Uh, whatever way you want to. But yeah, it's got a lot of mobility with this point sensor. So use this point sensor for utility sake, right? Information for your team uh, to increase your lethality so you can hit more of your shots and also just for movement with substrafing and the squid rolls. Definitely make sure to make use of your movement options with this weapon because it gives you uh, just that slight edge and any edge you can get to land your shots more accuracy or more accurately is huge because it's a five shot kill, which means, you know, Less forg I mean, less forgiveness in general, right? Basically, if you miss, right, it's going to be a lot more punishing for you. So try to close that gap with the point sensor. With your special, just use it how you always would. You know, once you paint up, um, you can aim it on a target. I like to split it up. So usually what I'll do, for example, let's take this target and the target up there. I like to do this, then up, and then back down. I just did it wrong there. But basically, I like to split them up because usually p opponents won't expect to have them staggered, they expect them all to come at once, and then they dodge them and then they're done. If you split it up, it makes it a lot harder for them, and especially on modes like, let's say, Rainmaker or Tower Control, where they have to be in one closed space, you can just get them uh, immediately by using these uh, these killer whales, right? So definitely make sure to split those up and use them effectively. Uh, now, uh, now that we've covered playstyle and we've gone over how you can use this weapon to be the most effective version of yourself possible when you're playing Splatoon, uh, I would like to cover some gear loadouts because I think that's something that you guys have asked for in previous guides. You've given me feedback on that, so I definitely want to provide some gear loadout opportunities so you guys can see what you might want to run. So uh, I will get on that and uh, we'll cut to that. All right. Okay, guys, so we are in the lobby and we're looking at all the abilities here. I want to give you guys some ideas that I've thought of, just some cool stuff that you might consider using. Um, I'm definitely going to be using some Ink Saver Sub on my build. I highly recommend this. Spamming point sensors is so good. I cannot stress this enough. Spam those point sensors. Use them like as much as possible. Use them liberally. Don't spare them. Because like I said, it's going to give you information for your team. Uh, and it's also going to give you information, if nothing else, right? So definitely using Saber Sub to minimize the effect that this uh, has on you, or that your sub has on you. Also run some Ink Saver Main. Uh, for sub, I'd say all you really need is two subs of Ink Saver Sub. For Ink Saver Main, however much you're comfortable with, I would say a few subs or a main. A main might be overboard, but maybe two subs as well for this. Um, just because this weapon, you're shooting it a lot because you you might be missing every once in a while. It's really important to be accurate and hit your shots with this weapon, but that's not always going to happen, and the accuracy can be a little bit iffy from here to there, um, depending. So definitely using Saver Main to compensate for missing some of your shots, it's just going to happen. That's how the weapon works since it's a five-shot kill. Um, now, for the more nitty-gritty stuff, obviously your movement abilities, you can run whatever one you're more comfortable with. I always recommend swim speed over run speed, but it's up to you. Since you're going to be shooting a little bit longer, uh, and you know, you're going to be standing a bit more, you might want to run run speed, but swim speed is just great. It's always good. So feel free to use those and your, you know, defense ups, not defense ups, but your resistance ones, uh, inks resistance up and sub resistance up. Definitely, you know, maybe use one sub of this and two subs of this, but that's the more general stuff. You guys can use these general ones however you want. To get into the more specific parts, um, I think special charge up is extremely important, uh, because using those killer whales is a great part of the kit. And if you can get it more often, you can apply more pressure onto the enemy team. Even if you're not getting a ton of kills with the weapon, at least you can be applying pressure at a range that the enemy team doesn't expect since the weapon's still new. People really get caught off guard, like I mentioned earlier, by the range of the weapon. They think they can outrange you, and then they realize they can't, and they have to fight you at the same range that they are usually used to fighting. So if you can also use your special to apply pressure to those people, then it's going to be even better. So... Highly recommend using special charge up. I would say a main, but that's just my opinion. Um, now, a more niche pick is uh, Thermalink. I think Thermalink could be really good on this weapon. I haven't tested it out myself, so if any of you in the comments have, uh, that would be great uh, if you guys could mention that, because I'm really interested to see how it works. I might try it and just see, right? Because, it, you know, Thermalink is a you know, main ability, so it shouldn't be too hard for me to get, but 
I do want to test thermal ink out. I think it would be cool because, you know, it's, as it says, allows you to track distant players hit with shots from your main weapon. Since you can apply those shots at a really far range and you apply a lot of them with that quick fire rate, you could hit a ton of people and with point sensors and thermal ink and your killer whales, you're going to be a scouting machine. You can call out enemies to all of your teammates by constantly locating them with thermal ink for yourself, right? To provide that, you know, that uh, sort of ghost silhouette but you can see them right where where they are behind walls and with point sensors uh, and killer whale will obviously track them. Now, you could also say that this uh, ability would be redundant because you already have enough tracking. Fair enough. But I think you could never have too much. So if you find room in your build for this or you're finding that you're losing track of people too much, consider running Thermalink. There's also a very, very, very rare case where I'd say you could run Respawn Punisher. If you're confident in hitting your shots and you're at a point where you don't think you're just going to run in and die all the time, I'd say try it because you could really mess up the enemy team's flow and cause them to stagger by having them respawn uh, a few seconds later, especially if they're running something like Tacticooler. They're expecting to spawn really quickly and hitting them with a respawn punisher uh, is going to have them spawn later than they think they will, especially since Slayers tend to get more aggressive when they have Tacticooler uh, on them, the buff on them. So consider running respawn punisher as well. But uh, yeah. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover with these uh, abilities. I would highly recommend running any of these. Um, if you guys have any others uh, that you'd want to run or any other builds, just drop them in the comments below. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the abilities. So I'm going to move on to the outro. Okay, guys. So that was my Splattershot Nova guide. I know it was a little, little bit more freeform. Um, you know, I've been, it's been a while since I've been back uh, on YouTube. I was doing some Twitch streaming this week, but I really just wanted to make a video on this weapon because I've been playing it on stream and I've really been enjoying it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the guide. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the content and seeing, you know, from my point of view, what I think about the weapon. I highly recommend trying it. It's a really good weapon and I think people are heavily underrating it. It's amazing and I think it's going to be really good the more people play it and get good at it, so I hope this guide helped you get good at it as well. Uh, I'd also like to point out to you guys that I do stream on Twitch most weeks. Uh, I also have a Twitter, public Discord. All the links for that will be in the di uh, description below. So uh, yeah, if you have any more feedback, drop it in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.